thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Chairman Murray, and for your courtesy. Um, thank you, Chairman Yellen, for appearing before us today and uh, for an important discussion. And I know you had one yesterday. Uh, we'll, um, I must say that I don't think we can say our economy is where we want it to be. It has some very serious problems. Like the foundation of a home, America's economy must be built on something real, solid, and something firmly planted. And neither federal stimulus in the form of easy money nor fiscal stimulus in the form of government borrowing can produce real lasting prosperity or a sound financial future long term. Millions of Americans face the economic future with great unease today. A large majority think the nation is on the wrong track. No government regulator, you or your predecessors, uh, no matter how intelligent, can see into the future and micromanage the economy. Let us consider the testimony of former Chairman Alan Greenspan and that uh, table before this committee in January of 2001. Uh, Chairman Greenspan came to alert Congress about an urgent policy decision that we would have to make. And what was that decision? Whether to raise the interest rates, reduce subprime lending, reform entitlements? No. Uh, Chairman Greenspan came to warn us that we would have to decide how to spend all of the surplus money after we soon paid off the entire federal debt of the United States of America. Uh, he predicted budget surpluses, quote, well past 2030, despite the budgetary pressures from the aging baby boom generation, close quote. Uh, and he said that, quote, the highly desirable goal of paying off the federal debt is in reach before the end of the decade, close quote. Uh, but Greenspan warned that after, quote, continuing to run surpluses beyond the point at which we reach zero or near zero federal debt, close quote, we would need to issue private asset accumulation. He added for emphasis that, quote, the emerging key fiscal policy need is to address the implications of maintaining surpluses beyond the point at which publicly held debt was effectively eliminated." Close quote. So forgive us if we can't, we sh as policy leaders ought not to assume everything you tell us is always correct. The maestro was certainly wrong in that. The Federal Reserve is not infallible. Our responsibility as legislators is to provide oversight we are one small voice for the American people in this process that you had. In 2011, the Fed forecasted growth uh, last year between 3.5 and 4.3 percent. Actual growth was an anemic 1.9 percent, uh, roughly half of what you predicted. And this is a dr drastic overestimation, not a small miss. And the Fed overestimated 2013 growth in every formal quarterly prediction for each year since 2011. For the people's representatives, your performance in that regard, the Fed's performance um, before you became chairman is not good. Let us consider whether the stimulus policies of the last five years have produced the results predicted. Since 2007, interest rates have been near zero, and the federal government has added $8.3 trillion to the debt, but where do we stand? The population has grown by 15 million since 2007, yet we are still 500,000 fewer people working today than in 2007. The workforce participation rate has fallen to 63 percent uh, of the civilian population, which is the lowest level in 36 years. Median household income has fallen an average of $2,268 per household. That's huge for working Americans, almost $200 a month less median household income. And uh, income cohort, the low income cohort has grown while the middle income uh, group has shrunk. The middle class is getting smaller in America. While the stimulus mindset in Washington has at least so far been better for the investor class and the political class, it has not been good for the working class. Not only has the stimulus failed American workers, but it, is, it has left us with record debt and an economy dependent on unprecedented policies that you and I know cannot continue. One of your two statutory duties is to advance full employment. 
While the good job numbers last month are a positive sign, it was fully offset, it seems to me, by the fact that 988,000 uh, people dropped out of the labor market entirely. And large numbers that did get jobs were part-time jobs. So the time has come, I think, to assume and return to first principles. Spend what you have, plan for the future carefully, lay out policies that are prudent and can be maintained long term. Don't borrow what you cannot pay back. So here are some ways I think would improve the economy without adding to the surplus, without adding to the debt. And I think uh, each and every one of these absolutely would help create jobs and prosperity. More American energy. Eliminate all costly and wasteful regulations that do not provide benefit. Make the tax code uh, flatter, simpler, uh, revenue neutral. Helping our com companies be globally competitive. Ensure that fair trade protects our workers from unfair trade. Adopt an immigration policy that serves American workers. Uh, turn the welfare office into a job training center. Streamline the government. Make it more productive and balance the federal budget uh, to restore economic confidence. These are concrete steps that will work. We need to return to those principles uh, and, and move this country forward. And I look forward to discussing with you any other ideas you might have that would help the country prosper. Thank you very much.